We're talking about New Year resolutions, and he's been through it, coaching people on how to put together the New Year resolutions, how to scale their, uh, skip their uh, disappointments and scale into success. Welcome. How are you doing, Jerry? Thank you. I'm very good to well see you. Happy New Year. Many happy returns, bro. 2019 was good? Was great. Was great. What's the outlook for 2020? Well, personally, I'm looking to scale my business. Mm. So that's one of the things I'm hoping to work on. Okay. And I'm hoping that I could also take what I do as a speaker mm. around the continent of Africa. <coughs> the, the concept of people putting together a New Year resolution, you know, they have a lot of hope and aspirations. They put it together. And then by the close of the year, they realize that they haven't done anything. So then disappointment sets in. And then they are they are distraught what should such people do going into 2020 and knowing that they will still have to put together a new year resolution yeah johnny i i, I actually believe that people who want to do well in life should mm. move beyond just having a resolution <clears throat> many times what people refer to as a resolution is generally a waste something that i would like to achieve in a year mm -hmm. something that if if things <laughs> go well i want to have but if you're really going to achieve significant success, mm -hmm. you need to move beyond just having a resolution mm -hmm. to having goals and having a plan. Mm -hmm. The difference is that in a resolution, I have a desire that I would like to achieve. Mm -hmm. It's not backed by a plan. Okay. When I have a goal and have a plan that is attached to the goal, mm -hmm. then I've sat down to think through all the things I need to do mm -hmm. to help me achieve my goal. So people need to move beyond just having a resolution, mm -hmm. something that you have resolved to do, to having a strategic plan. Mm. What is your plan? How do you intend to achieve your goals? What are the things that you need to do? What are mm. the skills you need mm. to acquire? Mm. Which relationships must you build? All of those things will come together to ensure that your goal is achieved. But if it's just a wish, something that you would like to do, okay. then your chances of achieving them are not very significant. The, so where does the concept come from? Because people look, pick up papers uh, prior to 31st December, then they write it. Sometimes the pastors will ask them to come and drop a copy of it in a certain bowl so they can anoint the sheets and pray over it. And, and that's it. it. Then they get disappointed. Is disappointment normal? Yeah, it is. Disappointment and failure is very normal in life. You see, life is a journey. Why should you fail? And life is a journey. Why should you and fail? For, in every journey, there are bumps, there are potholes <clears throat> to dodge. There are valleys to rise out of, there are mm. mountains to mm. climb. There are many challenges that will, ha that will come across your way. Mm. I have a young friend who is that I consult for. She's a young fashion entrepreneur. Mm. She was crossing the road one day when she dropped her tablet and her phone and the car passed over it. That seems very small. Wow. But just two weeks after that, there was a major flooding in her neighborhood. Wow. And it flooded her whole workshop. Ooh. All the machines she bought broke down. <coughs> That's disappointment. You don't it's say. normal. I have a young friend who got a scholarship to study in Europe to do his master's. I mean, he got a full scholarship that came with a monthly stipend. She put, he put in several thousands of CDs to get a visa. Right. He didn't get a visa. Mm. He missed the opportunity. Sometimes people stay in a marriage for about a decade or over a decade, mm. and then suddenly they lose their partner right. or divorce sets in. Mm. Now, in the general scheme of things, these are normal. Okay. It is life. People should expect that these things will happen. It's not honest to anybody to tell them that you shouldn't have these things. Mm. It's normal. Life has problems. Life has troubles. The question is, when these things happen, what do you do? I attend the same university, or I attended the same university with a friend of mine. We got the same fresh class degrees, or maybe second class upper. Uh, we applied for the same job. He knows I'm better qualified than him. He gets the job. I don't get the job. And you say that's normal? Well. You see, the, 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 the issue of being better qualified than another person is subjective. What, what are the processes, processes leading up to the job? Okay. If there's an interview, it's possible for a very good player to not to underperform <coughs> in a particular match. <coughs> that, that's it. Sometimes, too, the, the, the employers may be looking out for something in particular that you don't have. Okay. But sometimes, too, it, it can just be life mm -hmm. and it's happening. You may miss that opportunity because mm -hmm. if you get that opportunity, there's something else that is coming in the future that you'll miss. Mm. So all of these things are the things that that's come together to form life. Mm. The fact that somebody is good at what they do, does not mean that every day things will work out well for them. So if, if failing is normal, if disappointment is normal at some point in your life, what is that differentiating ingredient that sets us apart? So I'm bound to fail, you're bound to fail at some point. 
what is that trick, that ingredient that sets you apart to make you succeed? There are a number of things. The first I would say is perception. Mm. The difference between those who do well and those who don't is how they perceive failure. Okay. An achiever will, will, will fail and say that I have failed, mm. but I'm not a failure. Mm. Just that perspective, just that mindset sets him apart from the person who says I have failed, so I'm a failure. I believe that life is like a football match. It's 90 minutes. Mm. Until the 90 minutes are over, it's still anybody's game. Right. So until you've had your last breath, you're not a failure. Mm. So having the perception of what failure is, mm. and what failure does to you, makes a lot of difference. Okay. Then besides perception, there's also responsibility. Mm. Taking responsibility for the failure. In some cases, people need to recognize that this is my fault. Okay. I did this. Is it, is, it I that didn't, easy? is it that easy to identify and say, look, I, I got it wrong here? Most of the time, our first response when we fail is to lash out. We are looking for somebody to blame. Mm. But the difference between those who do well and those who don't is to eventually arrive at the conclusion that the buck stops with me. Okay. It's my fault. Mm. I take responsibility for this. Mm. It is only after you have taken responsibility for the situation that you receive the power to change it okay so there's perception there's responsibility there's mm. also learning mm. the zimbabwean entrepreneur strive masiwa who's built a lot of great businesses around the continent and around the world says that at some point he had a construction company that had about a thousand employees mm. and then suddenly things started going bad they couldn't find cash the, the business was owed so many creditors so they had to liquidate the company mm. i mean initially he was very angry he blamed everybody he blamed his employees but eventually, he had to <coughs> learn and realize that there is something I didn't do right. Mm. That learning process helps you identify all the loopholes that were created that led to the failure. Therefore, leads you to the next thing, taking action. You mentioned a young lady who lost her iPad and her phone, and then a few weeks later, flooding, flooding yeah. came up there. So for someone like her, for somebody who was experienced divorce, somebody who has dated a guy or a lady for six years, five years, and they see marriage so close. They've actually bought everything. And then all of a sudden, the guy says, I'm not interested. The girl says, I'm not interested. Somebody who starts a small business and... I mean, so the, these setbacks, how do they pick themselves up from the debris to motivate themselves to rise to the top one more time? I think that the first step is grief. Mm. People say we shouldn't cry over spilled milk. But sometimes crying mm -hmm. over spilled milk is important so that you can let go of the pain, let go of the emotions, so that you can get up and go look for a new cow and get new milk. Mm. So if you've gone through a very challenging circumstance, you've gone through a very difficult situation, you want to grieve, you want mm. to cry. If you want to cry, cry. Don't go about life thinking that you're superhuman and that you have to pretend that everything is okay. Mm. Mm. If you want to cry, cry. All of that process is important so that you can let go of the emotion, okay. let out the rivers out of your system mm -hmm. so that you can you can bounce back. Another thing you want to do is to really to do what Strive Masiwa did, okay. to investigate, find mm -hmm. out what went wrong. Mm -hmm. In every relationship failure, there is something that all of us do to contribute to mm -hmm. it. Very often we want to look at the other partner and point out all the 21 things that they did wrong in a relationship. Mm -hmm. But very often, there is something we also did wrong. So reflect on the situation, mm -hmm. think through the situation, mm -hmm. identify what you could have done to contribute to the situation, mm. and then what you can do to correct it. I know a young man who had a lot of difficult relationships, very, very difficult relationships, and he says that he's married now, mm. and he says that I have become a better husband to my wife because of the feelings I had. Right. Because all of those challenging relationships exposed to him the things that he does that were not helpful. Those were his, like, his licensure exams. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it had helped him improve. Mm. Now he, he knows how to communicate. Okay. He knows how to respond when he's angry. Mm. And all of those things that he does that were affecting his partners. Mm. So everything we go through has the possibility to either destroy us or to right. propel us. Mm. What, what, whatever, whichever of them happens depends on us. There are some who are born with silver spoons in their mouth or golden spoons. Um, they have all the resources, they have all the connections, they have all the money, everything else is at their beck and call and their disposal. But they never see success. I mean, they always uh, have had to run back to their parents for help. So the father sets him up, he wants to run a, a fashion school. Father buys all the, the machinery, 
uh, brings in lecturers to help. So he's just basically managing it. After six months, psh, it goes down. Then he starts another one, psh, it goes down. Starts a restaurant. Psh. There's a, this other guy who's, who doesn't have anything, comes from a very poor background. He starts from a tabletop, raises it to a small container, then he starts expanding. How is that possible for somebody who has all the resources, all the connection to fail, and somebody who doesn't have anything at all starts and succeeds? How does it happen? Is it juju? Johnny, that's a really solid question. Is it juju? It's, it's, it's not juju. It's, it's, a, it's a simple matter of principles. In life, it's almost impossible to manage what you have not built. Okay. If you haven't built something, mm -hmm. it's almost impossible to manage it. Mm -hmm. People who are good managers, who are not builders, have acquired the expertise mm -hmm. to manage it. So a person may have all the resources, all the opportunities, mm -hmm. all the connections, but do they have the expertise? Okay. Do they have the expertise? That expertise is what makes the difference between success and failure. Mm -hmm. The person who doesn't have all the resources, who doesn't have the connections, who has a broken wooden spoon mm. in his mouth, mm. is motivated by circumstances, okay. by the environment, by their situation, mm. to acquire the expertise. Mm. I've realized that sometimes in business, not having money is an, is an advantage than having money. Really? Because business is a game of numbers. Mm. What's numbers? Knowing how much it will cost to do this, how much we will make from this, mm. what we should put in to get this. Now, when you have a lot of resources, you don't spend a lot of time to think through these things mm. because you have a lot. If you right. lose them, you get mm. them back. Mm. But if you don't have a lot, you think through. You have three options, options A, B, C, D. Okay. You have a thousand CDs. Thousand okay. CDs can do options A, B, C, D. Right. So you think through the process what to decide which of these options should I invest my thousand. It would be cash cow. Mm. Exactly, would be my cash cow. Because you know that if that thousand cities is gone, you, 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 you're, you're going to you suffer. You've lost it all. You, think, you, you even think through the process of using a thousand cities. Okay. At, every, at every stage of the process, mm. you are monitoring, mm. you are evaluating, you are assessing, mm. you are asking, what are we doing wrong? What are we doing right? What should we stop doing? So having too much resources mm. can become are, a Are you suggesting that for those who are Dada Bs, who, whose parents are interested in what they do and they are pumping money into it, they should perhaps at some point step back a bit and allow their children to, to bite the bullet, as they say. I mean, generally in life, I think that sometimes we should withhold help mm. from people so they can learn to help They'll themselves. They'll call you wicked. That's fine. It's normal. But the, the thing I'll say to any parent who is in a position with resources, mm. who wants to raise a young person, is that let them grow through the system. Okay. Let them start from front desk, even if it's security man, security man, front desk, mm. sales assistant, mm -hmm. marketing manager, and rise through the ranks. Mm. Then they come to understand the business. Okay. They understand the systems and the structure and mm. how to run it. Mm. But if whilst everybody else was hustling to build their business, they were sleeping in an Ivy school, mm. driving a, their own car, mm. they graduate from school and want them to come and run the business, or to set them up to, to build a business, mm. that might likely lead to failure. Hmm. So. People, people, we all need to learn how to build systems, okay. learn how to build structures. Mm. Somehow, adversity mm. is a better motivation for learning how to build than prosperity. 31st December, Afi Diebe Ye Ye is a very popular song. People sing that all the time, and they sing that year on year. Yet their lives are not moving in the direction that they want it to go. In 2020, what would you say are the key elements of a successful life? And by this, everybody has their definition of what success is. Somebody buying a car means success. Somebody building a house means success. Somebody marrying his long-time girlfriend means success. But there are ingredients that run through all of these to make up success. What would you say, having trained a lot of people, coached a lot of people, are the key ingredients we need to abide by to achieve success in 2020? Johnny, we must move forward in life with two things. Mm. Very often we do just we just move forward with one. We must move forward in life with hope. Hope. Hope is believing that things will work out well. Mm -hmm. And then with wisdom. wisdom. Wisdom is ensuring that things work out well. Okay. So in hope, I believe that things will go well. Mm -hmm. I sing a free day baby, but I don't stop there. Right. I move on to acquire the wisdom, to acquire the know-how to get things done right. So one of the first things that we can all do if you're going to do well in this year mm -hmm. is thinking. 
We need Thinking to think. is not the same as worrying. When I worry, I focus on a problem to the point that it debilitates me. Mm -hmm. When I think, I focus my mind on a problem that I need to solve, mm. on a challenge I need to overcome, on a target I need to achieve to get a solution. Mm. Now, the raw material for doing quality thinking is ideas. Okay. Ideas are the raw materials for doing really, really good thinking. Mm -hmm. Now, ideas are obtained either intuitively from within you, mm -hmm. from within your mind, from within your spirit. Mm -hmm. But even ideas that are obtained intuitively have to be supported by ideas that you, you obtain inculcatively. Okay. Let me just explain that. Right. I, 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 I get it. For example, Mark Zuckerberg got an idea for Facebook, right. probably through intuition. Mm -hmm. But in order to build Facebook... Well, intuition is that, well, he's then, it hits him. Exactly. Okay. An idea that I receive mm -hmm. inside of me, from my spirit, from my mind. Mm -hmm. But in order to build Facebook, he had to learn through inculcation. Mm -hmm. So all the things I need to do, learn how to build the business, mm -hmm. learn how to manage. So there must be a lot of learning. Mm -hmm. Many times, we say we have a dream. Mm -hmm. Somebody suggested and said, I like Johnny, I want to be like Johnny. Mm -hmm. I want to be a presenter on TV. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain knowledge base or skill set that has brought Johnny to where he is now. Right. So beyond just having hope that I'll do well, I must build my knowledge base. So talent is not enough. Talent is not enough. Mm. As a matter of fact, a talented person who doesn't move the step to build knowledge, to acquire skills, may fail. Mm. A person may not have a lot of talent, may have average talent, but if they put in a lot of grit, a lot of effort, build knowledge, build skills, they are more likely to do well than a person who has talent. So okay. there must be thinking, there must be learning, there must be skills development, mm. then there must be relationships. Relationships. You may be good or even better than someone, but it will take somebody who knows him to make a recommendation. Mm. If, especially if you do business, that's when you organize the power of relationships. Relationship. One client can introduce you to 10 other clients. Or one client can introduce you to one client mm. who also introduces another client and then the relationship keeps on going on and on and on. on. If you're going to do well in life, we must be deliberate about building relationships. Mm. Don't close church and walk away without saying hello to somebody. Mm. You're in a church, thought. you've not had a job for a year, mm. and there are CEOs all around you. You've never mm. said hello to anybody. You must be deliberate about building relationships. There are people who have core credits, and the only thing they used to do is to browse Facebook. They never call to check up on anybody. You have no relationships. Or take nude videos and post on social media. <laughs> yeah. if, if, if you're looking for 10,000 cities to start a business, why are you going to ask for the 10,000 cities? You don't have any relationships. You don't have any connection. Your social capital is weak. So you, we need to build social capital. Social we capital. must be deliberate about it. Okay. Whatever you want to become, mm. there are people in the world, people in the universe who can help you get there. No one person will help you make the entire journey. But everybody can make their own little contribution to mm. the, that point. The question is, are you building relationships? Are you building? Bobbing, thank you very much. Sherry Bobbing is a motivational speaker. He's also the CEO of Bobbing Communications. He says, in this year, if you must make it, you must think, you must have hope, you must have ideas, you must build relationships, and you must live wisely.